Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing the DeskLab 4K portable monitor. I saw this as a Kickstarter project and it caught my interest for a potential second screen to use when streaming so I can have comments pulled up on it or for when I'm traveling. To start though, let's get into the specs. So let's get the price out of the way first. This costs $399 and it ships for free. I'll have a discount code in the description for you though, which takes $20 off. The big downside with this though is for those living in North America, this ships from China, so it took four weeks to get to me. Moving on though, this is a 15.6 inch 4K true LED IPS touchscreen panel, which the touchscreen only works in certain instances that I'll cover later. This can display 720p, 1080p, or 4K resolution. The luminance is 400cd slash m2, which is the candlescence per square meter, with a contrast ratio of 1200 to 1, 16.7 million display colors, and a 20 millisecond response time. This weighs 725 grams, which is roughly 1.6 pounds, and is 3.4 millimeters thick, or 0.14 inches at its thinnest point, although it's about double that at the one end which has the ports and the buttons. For ports, there are two USB Type-C, one mini HDMI, and one micro USB, and then you have the headphone jack. The screen has flicker-free technology, anti-glare screen, and low blue light filter. This has dual hi-fi speakers, although I couldn't find info on the watts. They do get pretty loud though, so let's do a quick sound test. In the box, you'll find the monitor, HDMI to mini HDMI cable, USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C charger, and the user manual. The box isn't great looking, just as a side note, although that really doesn't matter, but it could have been a little bit better with the presentation. So now that I've covered all of the specs, let's get into the things that I like about this monitor. The first thing is the visual fidelity, as this looks great in person. The colors are vibrant and the menu offers a lot of adjustments to this, which is great in different lighting situations. This being as portable as it is, has me excited to travel with this when I go out of town for certifications for my personal training business, as I watch tutorial videos on the plane rise and I use it to go over my notes. The size may be too big for some, but hits a sweet spot for me personally as I can use it for gaming on a console, or I can use it with my laptop or PC as a second screen, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So when I'm streaming, I can actually have Twitch or whatever I'm using to stream pulled up on that, and I can still read the text without it being an issue. Which gaming on my Xbox was a breeze, and not only performed great, but looked great the whole time as well, with no drops in the frames per second or any lag, but that was just for the console. On my laptop it looked and performed great also, but I had problems with my phone, the tablet, and the PC, which I'll talk about in a bit. The touchscreen works great when it works, but the downside was that it only worked when connected to my laptop. It didn't work with my iPhone, or my iPad, or my PC, which with the iPhone and the iPad, it seems like it would work since those already have touchscreen features built into them. The ports are great and I like the two USB Type-C ports, which means I can connect this to my laptop or the power adapter with one port and then use the other to charge my iPhone off of this while I use it. Lastly, the speakers surprise me as they get pretty loud and although it doesn't quite have the same sound clarity or bass of external speakers, it still sounds pretty solid. So now that I've covered the things that I like about this monitor, let's talk about the things that I don't like about this monitor. So with this, one of the hard things about trying to do this review is a lot of things that I like about this monitor unfortunately have a negative counterpart to it. Outside of this first part that I want to talk about, which is probably one of the more annoying ones, which is the case. It costs $50 and it feels like it only costs them $1 to make. It's just not that great, and although it works fine, you have to tape it to the monitor on the back, which, side note, if you do get it, you want to make sure that you're doing that tape as a box, which I started to do mine and then had to peel it off once my brain kind of wrapped around what I was supposed to do this as. I've never had to tape a case to a piece of tech, so I just think this could have been implemented a little bit better. It's also already showing signs of wear and tear on the edge that you prop this up on, and it's only been a little over a week that I've been using this. 
You'll of course need a case for this, and there isn't a way to prop it up without that, but I'm sure there are alternatives out there on Amazon. Next, the monitor is a fingerprint magnet, just like any other iPad or tablet. It just gets covered with them, so keep a wipe around when you travel when you're using this because once it all gets fingerprints all over it, that visual fidelity starts to go away because you're trying to view it through a bunch of smudge marks. I mentioned the menu having a lot of different options and that is great, but the button itself that you use is really sensitive. So it seems like you have to find the groove and hit it right where you need to for it to register. Otherwise, it's actually hard to do and you kind of skip through that. So it can be frustrating sometimes when you're trying to bring up the menu and it's just not popping up because you're not actually pushing the button into this tiny groove that it needs to fit into. It's like sliding your credit card into a moving reader. It just takes a second to get spot on. Now, I'm not sure if this has to do with the product or the item that you pair it with, but my iPhone and iPad don't allow for touchscreen like I mentioned, but my laptop does. I was a little let down by that. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but like I said, I'm not sure if this has to do with the desk lab or if it has to do with the iPhone products and the Apple products with the tablets. I don't have an Android tablet, so I can't try it out with that. Like I said, just a little bit let down that these touchscreen products don't transfer over to this. Now when connecting these products also, it's great that it has all of these ports, but when I'm connecting the USB power cable, then I'm connecting my iPhone, and you actually have to run that through a special adapter, which I'll have a link for that in the description, you end up with all these cables. So instead of this feeling like a very streamlined experience, and it is nice that you can blow your phone or your tablet up to a larger screen, especially with mine because mine's an iPad mini, it's just a lot of cables now. So it kind of feels like a mess when you're actually using it. And it depends on the space because if I'm using it on a plane, I mean, this may feel like I'm just taking up all this area with these cables and it just feels so crammed. It doesn't feel user friendly necessarily. Lastly, we have the response time in Hertz, which for normal stuff isn't that bad outside of a delay I noticed when using the iPad on it, but for gaming, it's an issue. For a casual gamer, it won't potentially be a big deal, but any serious gamer is gonna notice changes in the FPS when you're dealing with your iPhone specifically or a tablet. Like I mentioned, I didn't really notice that when I was connected to the Xbox or the laptop. I say the laptop is kind of the in-between, I think it's probably there, it's just how long are you playing that you may notice something here or there. And sometimes you're thinking that it may be the monitor, but it's really that the game itself is stuttering because I'm playing Subnautica and that actually has a stutter in it a little bit. So it just depends on the game with this, but if you're playing a casual slow paced game, I don't think it's really gonna be an issue if you're playing on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or any type of tablet or laptop, which is kind of that in-between space. And then with the console, I was playing on my Xbox One X and I didn't have any issues when playing Halo 5 at all. And I almost forgot to cover a regular PC. So I connected this to my PC and I'm not sure why you would play the game on the desk lab if you have a monitor, but when I played Doom Eternal with this. There was a delay between, and I was using a controller so I wouldn't be on screen. There was a delay. So that's really when I could notice the 20 millisecond response time. So I'd say in that instance too, it's not gonna be something that you're going to want to do. But if you're using it as a second screen where you can look at comments and things like that, like I mentioned while you're streaming, it'll be fine for that. But playing a game on your PC, probably not a good choice. So like I mentioned, you have these positives, but some of these are coinciding with a negative with these. You have all these ports, but then you have a bunch of cables, so it feels cluttered. You have this amazing looking screen, but the screen itself is just a fingerprint magnet. The case to me is just a negative <laughs> with this, um, but you have these things that may prevent you from wanting this. I think this is a very niche product where a lot of designers and that's kind of who they geared this towards they do mention gamers but with gamers i think it's going to be if anybody's using it it's going to be with consoles or like i said you're using a phone or a tablet but it's more of a casual game because once you get into fast-paced games it just doesn't really work with that 
but I think this being more of a niche product, a lot of designers are going to lean into this a little bit more because they can pair this with their laptop and then they can use it as a touch screen. So that's going to wrap this video up. Like I said, I'll have a discount code in the description if you're wanting this. But if it seems like a pain to wait the four weeks to get this, I will have a couple other products that I found on Amazon that ship with Prime so you can get it in a couple days. And they'll be around the same price point, maybe even a little bit cheaper. And a lot of these actually look exactly the same. Now, I haven't reviewed those, but I tried to make sure that the specs looked pretty close to this. So, as always, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me, and I'll see you in the next video.